Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm decorating for the holidays and I wanted to go with a rustic and handmade holiday theme this year, inspired by old fashioned and vintage feels, just using what we have, keeping it pretty simple. I didn't really wanna buy any new decorations. I wanted to use what I had and try to be as creative as possible. So that's what we're gonna do in this video and I hope you enjoy. Before I jump into this video, I thought it might be appropriate this holiday season to share one of the organizations that we like to give to throughout the year. We sponsor a child through World Vision, but they also have a gift catalog that they send around the holidays. In this catalog and on their website, you can find tangible gifts, fruit trees, water systems, school supplies, bicycles, um, bed nets for families, and even chickens so that the eggs can provide food for families but also that they can start a small business selling their eggs. With your generosity, you can gift life-saving medicines and care to help children, life-saving nets to protect kids against malaria, and also even school supplies so girls can get an education. So be sure to check out their website, order their catalog during the holidays if you want um, some ideas on how you can give back and some tangible gift options. I'm gonna put info in the description box so if you wanna support World Vision this holiday season, you can find information there. So now let's jump into the video. First up, I'm making some handmade linen stockings with some leftover linen fabric that I had from last year when I made a pair of linen pants. So I have this fabric here. I'm actually gonna cut just enough to make two stockings. I'm going to use a stocking we already have to sort of copycat that, use it as my base, make my life easy, and just trace that. But first, I'm gonna make sure that I measure how much fabric I'm gonna need. I'm also gonna iron it. Linen gets pretty wrinkly, so definitely wanna iron it first. And then I'm gonna double up the fabric. Um, now, I just started learning to sew last year. So I've been keeping my projects pretty simple. Um, I just, I mean, I started taking over the living room when I would sew, so my husband built me this sewing table and we turned this sort of like back room that we never really used into my crafty, creative sewing room. So far, I've done really easy projects like decor for around the house, pillow covers, curtains, simple pouches, you know, learning to hem clothes, being creative with clothes, reconstructing things like that, really simple. This one, I knew that this would be pretty easy because I could just take a stocking we already have, trace it, adding about a half an inch, give or take for seam allowance. Since I doubled the fabric, you're gonna see here that I have two pieces, so I can just take this right over to the sewing machine and begin to pin it. That way it'll stay in place when I sew. So this isn't a sewing tutorial, but I just wanted to share with you what I've been up to at the machine and I'll continue to share as I learn and grow in this department. My sister-in-law does have a great blog and YouTube channel with wonderful resources on how to learn to sew. That's actually where I learned about this machine, how to use the machine and how to get started. If there's something in particular that I wanna learn, I usually just look it up on YouTube, try to find some resources. Recently, I wanted to alter a pair of shorts that I had that didn't fit in the waist. I found a great tutorial and just followed it and it worked out pretty well. So with this, I'm sort of just going by eye because I was looking at our stockings, um, just turning it inside out, giving it a good iron, pushing out any ridges. Um, once you turn it inside out, you have to make sure you push out the ridges to get a nice stocking. And then I also have to create a loop. So I measured a long piece of fabric. I folded it. I'm just gonna put a straight stitch and then I'm gonna turn it into a loop and stitch that on the side of the stocking so that I can hang that on the fireplace. And that's what you can see that I'm doing here, just doing a simple straight stitch. And I also folded over the top of the stocking and hemmed that just so it's clean. But honestly, depending on you know how much time you have, the great thing about these is they can be pretty rustic and handmade. They don't have to be perfect. Thank you. 
So now I'm gonna start decorating. I did this over the course of a few days, starting first by bringing the tree out of the shack. Now for the longest time in our marriage, we went and got trees. We loved real trees, but about three years ago, we bought our first fake tree for a super duper discount sale, like day after Christmas deal and we just couldn't resist the price. Plus, it's the easiest, prettiest tree. I call it the five minute tree because once we pull it out of the shack in five minutes, one, two, three, it's put together, plugged in, and it's ready to go. The only thing after that is to just decorate with whatever ornaments we're gonna be using. So, and I love how it looks, it's really pretty. So it's worked out pretty well and we like it. Hopefully it will last for years and years to come. I'm gonna make sure all the lights are working well this year and then I'm gonna wait to decorate until the kids get home from school because they like to help out with the ornaments. All of our ornaments are plastic but they look like they are glass. So that works out really well because um, the kids love to help out with that. The only things that I bought this year for Christmas decor was a new tree skirt. I'm sure I could have figured out one to sew or maybe even knit, but this one was 50% off from Tractor Supply and I loved it, so I picked that up. I also got a few things from Trader Joe's. I wanted the kids to try this and do some hot chocolate while we were decorating. I also got a wreath. I stopped at Tractor Supply to pick up the chicken feed and I couldn't resist these really beautiful vintage candles or vintage inspired candles um, with these containers that I can reuse after the candles finished, plus they were 50% off. So once the kids came home from school, I um, got some almond milk going on the stove and then you can just put the snowman inside and it has marshmallows inside. It's really fun. We turned on the Home Alone soundtrack and we drank our hot chocolate and started decorating the tree. And then my niece came over and she helped out with the tree too. Yes. So this was the first part of our Christmas decorating was getting started with the tree and pulling out some of the DIY ornaments that I did on my channel last year. So some of those will be on the tree like the, the birdhouse and the holiday hymn decorations that we've made in the past. Also always love to have the potpourri going, been doing this since I was a kid. Um, another favorite this year was to just take some oranges and cloves. There's a few things you can do with oranges and cloves. So we know I love to use the orange scraps and cloves and cinnamon for the potpourri where we basically simmer it on the stove. Also the old fashioned pomander, super simple. Just take an orange and insert the cloves and you can create various different designs and use that for decoration, but it also makes the house smell really lovely. I loved actually doing this because the smell is incredible and it's just a natural way to make your house smell nice for the holidays. I think diffusing essential oils and using more natural scents throughout the home is ideal. I personally do love candles still, so I try to go for soy candles or more natural candles, but um, I still do really like them a lot. So I try to, I guess, have a balance between the two, right? And then you can choose what you feel most comfortable with in your own home. But yeah, I'm just gonna use this as a display. I also really love pears and pine cones from outside and even cinnamon sticks if you have it. Just a really simple display. Next up, I'm gonna dehydrate some oranges. So I think I'm gonna take two oranges to dehydrate. You can always do more if you wanna make more. Um, we do have a dehydrator. My husband highly recommended us getting an Excalibur dehydrator, which is what he used when he worked at a restaurant called Into the Seventh Ray, where they did a lot of dehydrated items. I know that you can also do this in your oven on the lowest setting. You also wanna put a pan of water to offer some humidity as well. I've seen a few different tutorials on it, but we've had a dehydrator for a while now and we like to use it to dehydrate fruits, especially apples, pineapple, um, you know, berries. So, and there's a lot of different things you can do with a dehydrator. I use it a lot of times for herbs as well. So I'm gonna try to feature it more in videos as I use it, but I did pull it out to dehydrate the oranges for today. And an added benefit is the entire house smelled amazing while it was dehydrating. So I've dehydrated lavender in there before and the whole house smells like lavender. It's wonderful. But after I'd say a few hours or so, they were ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and use that as garland. So I'm gonna use twine and um, just start decorating with the dehydrated oranges. Now, if you don't wanna use brand new oranges, 
you can go ahead and just wait till your maybe your oranges aren't being eaten in the house and you have a few leftover ones that seem like they might go bad in the next few days. This is a great way to sort of utilize that if you want to. I went ahead and did that with some twine. It looked really pretty and I love how they turned out. And then any leftovers I just used as decor. I love candlesticks. Uh, it is one of those things that I like to be really cautious with and try to only use them when I know I'm gonna be present in the room. So I blow them out if I'm gonna be leaving the room. But they really are beautiful and especially if you're going for that old fashioned vintage feel with your decor, they're a beautiful addition to have. But I really loved how this overall aesthetic looked. Next up, we're gonna make a really simple ornament using book pages. So you can use an old book or you can use uh, printed out book pages, a book that you've already read. Um, it's best if it's an old book because it already has that vintage feel, but if it's a newer book and you wanna give it that vintage feel, I put some coffee in a tray and then I just went ahead and dunked each piece of paper in the tray to sort of give it that that stain, that coffee stain. You know what else is really fun? I've been doing a lot of research on staining clothes naturally and also just using synthetic dyes as well. But I want to experiment more with dyeing clothes with tea baths and also coffee. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to experiment with like turmeric, cranberries. Ooh, so many fun ideas. I'm hoping I will sort of touch on that a little bit more in the spring. Um, but yeah, that's basically what we're doing is we're just dyeing these pages. We're coffee staining these pages so that they have a vintage feel. So after the pages have dried from the coffee stain, I'm gonna go ahead and start folding. I'm gonna do an accordion fold. This would also be fun to do, remember, in elementary school when we used to make those like cut out um, snowflakes with paper, you could do that. Um, here I'm just folding forward and then back forward and then back to create an accordion. I'm also going to take my scissors and um, it's gonna go all the way around and create a really nice sort of centerpiece ornament that's gonna go in between the stockings and you'll see when I'm finished. Um, but I'm gonna show you here basically what, um, what I'm doing. I also like this idea with old hymn pages. Um, last year, or maybe it was the year before, I made some hymn ornaments, which I really love because I love music, so anything music related is really fun. And you know, including the kids if it's appropriate. I'm using a hot glue gun for this one just to glue all of the pages that I've folded together until it goes all the way around. And you'll see it really comes together quite beautifully. And then I'm gonna use just some twine, uh, put a little hole at the top and hang it. You can hang these, you can make them smaller and hang them on your Christmas tree, but I'm gonna hang it um, for a little bit of a different mantle feel this year than I've done in the previous years. Since I'm using linen fabric that I already had, the stockings are not gonna be able to hold a lot. So I'm mostly using them as decor versus actually being able to hold a lot um, in terms of you know gifts or stocking stuffers, things like that. So I'm just gonna put some foliage, some eucalyptus from our yard and just sort of you know make it look festive. I'm gonna put some tree branches up on the mantle. I like to do something a little bit different every single year just to change it up. I use a lot of the same decorations, obviously that we have, that we keep in our garage, organized in our boxes. And this year we inherited this really beautiful nativity scene. That was one thing that I wanted for Christmas that I asked for. And then um, my husband's stepmom actually gave this to us and I absolutely love it. It's made of wood, it's gorgeous. So I put that on our mantle as well. I'm gonna go ahead and hang the dehydrated orange garland and then put my homemade ornament in the middle to finish that off and give it a finishing touch. 
You can also use sprigs and natural elements like the dehydrated oranges with very simple brown paper wrapping or even reuse bags to wrap gifts. Um, the simple brown wrapping paper I love because it's also compostable. So there's a lot of ways to be creative but to keep it really simple for the holidays. We really do have so much to be grateful for and we live in a time now of course of technology the fact that i'm even posting this video um i have the fireplace going in real life and also on my television in the background but finding joy in the simple things this holiday season simple handmade ideas and gifts looking at the natural elements all around us and being creative and appreciating what we have in this season and also in this season of our life Check out World Vision. I'll put the information in my description and I hope you have a wonderful holiday. I'll see you in the next video.